Last time on Sailing Solianus. We have been in Mobile for almost two months now, being held up by the fabrication of our arch and bimini. Okay. I'm excited to see the work on art, yeah. As he left, the fabricator told us he'd have the arch finished by the end of the week, three to four days later. In the meantime, we had been making good progress on our big electrical project to upgrade our battery bank. It goes to the ground wire. But discovered that our new batteries didn't fit in our old battery box. In the same group size they're supposed to fit. Oh my god. You motherfucker. Hmm. Kirk. Yeah? Our butt is naked. Yeah, it is. A week later, the welder showed up with two pieces of bent aluminum, a far cry from the finished arch he had promised. Building an arch with davits and an integrated bimini to support our new solar panels was a project that we wanted to splurge on. We didn't need to build this in Mobile, but we figured if we were going to be here for a while, it would be great to get it done while working on other parts of the electrical project. Does that look high enough, Lauren, if it was... Yeah, I like that. That looks really good. We did our homework and asked for recommendations. We checked references and looked at boats that they had worked on. We provided drawings and sent photos of what we wanted and told them that we'd be around for four to five weeks. But if that timeline wasn't easily doable, we didn't want to move forward. They seemed incredibly helpful, walking us through their process, bringing over materials to show us what the finish would look like, and they were extremely cordial. They were adamant that this was a two-week job, three weeks tops. And since they didn't have a lot of work at the moment, they were confident that they could get it done. Yeah. After the arch measurements had been taken earlier that day, and the spots marked on the deck where the mounting holes would go for the base plates, Kirk drilled out oversized holes so we could fill them with epoxy in preparation for re-drilling during the final mounting. Okay, what's happening? We are right in the middle of our battery upgrade project. The boat came with two batteries. Neither of them were house nor start specific. We don't actually know how old they are, but they were never very good. So... 2005. They're from 2005, so that's pretty old. Are you sure about that? That's really old. Maybe it was 2015. I think it was yeah, 2015. Yeah, either way. They were bad batteries. They were bad with. batteries. So we upgraded. We've got four new batteries. Two of those will go here where the old ones were, and two of them are gonna go back here in our quarter berth storage area. So we're gonna lose a bit of storage, but we're gonna gain a lot of battery juice. Electrons. Yes. So our one lead acid battery, our auxiliary slash start battery is gonna go probably in this box. The other three batteries that we got are Firefly Oasis batteries, which are carbon foam. They're very similar to AGM. We chose these batteries because they have most of the advantages of a lithium battery, but are half the cost, there's no complex battery management system, and they won't catch fire. They can be drawn down to an 80% depth of discharge. They're rated for a very high number of charge cycles. They can be charged quickly, and they can be stored at a partial state of discharge for long periods of time without damage. Because we work remotely from the boat, having a robust, easy-to-manage battery bank was a big priority for us. Kirk has built a brand new battery box for our additional two batteries, or is in the process of. So show me what we got going on here. Do you want me to take it apart? Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, now it goes back together, right? You're gonna know how to do this? <laughs> So we've got two shelves for each of the batteries, and we've been using these to measure the size of the batteries. The reason that they're on different levels is because we wanted to use the maximum amount of space and also give ourselves the ability to work on the engine. The fuel filter, sorry. The oil filter. The oil filter is actually right here behind this panel. So having this battery as low as possible made it easy for us to be able to change the fuel filter. Oil filter to change the oil filter right here. <laughs> I'm super pumped with how this battery box is coming together. I'm on version three, because I made the first templates out of cardboard. So what I'm doing is tracing the contours of the hull so we get a nice tight fit. I made the second, what I thought was gonna be the actual battery box out of half inch ply that I got from Home Depot. 
And I knew it wasn't marine grade, but I didn't realize how crappy it was. Called all over town here in Mobile to try and find marine grade hardwood. I finally did, so I've got marine grade three quarter inch plywood. which is like way overbuilt for what this thing's gonna hold, but it's fitting like a glove. A thousand years from now, someone's gonna find this battery box on the bottom of the ocean and be like, wow, this is, this is well built. Probably not, but with a little bit of glass to tab them into the bulkhead of the boat, it's gonna stiffen up the boat. <laughs> I'm gonna laminate the uh, plywood today, coat them all down in epoxy, tabbing and glass tomorrow, hopefully. Uh, and overnight tonight, I'm gonna be working on electrical. These guys that are building our arch are still, we have not had a stern rail on the back of the boat for the past week and a half. The arch is almost done, but they still have the whole bimini to do. Forward quite a bit too. Yeah. I think we're gonna be here for two weeks. The arch is not gonna be exactly what I wanted. I'm not 100% happy. It's not exactly following the lines of the boat, which was really important to me. It's the whole reason we wanted to go custom, but it's starting to look really nice. And the back rail looks awesome. They did a really nice job replacing the curvature of the uh, stern rail integrated in with the arch, which is really, really cool. That was a huge part that I wanted. It's just the shape, you know, with all the constraints that we had trying to fit the size solar panels that we wanted to get enough solar generation, you know, just all the stuff coming together, it's, it's difficult. One of the things that I decided we would do when or if we ever build another arch is to do it myself with conduit first to kind of get the lines that I want and take rough measurements. And at least that kind of gives you a model to work from and you, you can see the outlines, you know. There are a few other odds and ends that it, we would have done. Oh, we would have gone to the shop where they were fabricating. We sort of relied on one or two other boats in the yard that had had some work done. But as it turns out, they didn't actually do all the metal work on that boat like they had told us. We're continuing to learn over and over again. Boats and timelines just don't mix, no matter what you're trying to do. So I'm feeling, I'm feeling happy though. We're, we're hoping to see clear water, clear blue, awesome ocean water soon and get out of the, the mud here in Mobile. So, back to work. It's like making crates. All right, so I've got to figure out where to mount all of these things. This isn't an exact layout physically, but it's a close approximation. I can do a positive and negative bus bar in one piece with this guy. I just pulled this wire, but that wire is going to come in here, and then I need the wire to go to the battery, which is going to go out there. So I've got those two wires, which are big cables, so they need to use the big post. Then we've got number 10s coming in for our solar chargers, which we might have three of. Then we've got the 120 shore power charger, which is also a number 10. The last one, which is for the DC panel. So those I think will all work. So then on the negative side, we've got the cable that's coming from the starter engine, which is going to come in here, and then going to the shunt, which is going to go out here. Then I've got the DC panel, which is number 10, the three solar chargers, which are number 10, and then the shore power, which is also number 10. So I think I can make this all work. So what I need to figure out is where we can mount these things. This is the shunt inside of this box here. So I want to give you a couple layout options. Option one is we separate these like this. So we've got enough room to run these cables down and out, to have these cables come up and out, whichever way they need to go. And this clears below the seat. Option two is to put this vertically and we would mirror the house bank batteries with the positive on the right and the ground on the left. Option three is we wouldn't have that be vertical.
Where's my red cable? Your red cable is... You lost it. 90% of boat projects is finding the thing you just had in your hand. No. Is it in your pocket? No. Yes. <laughs> okay, here's the red cable. At reverse of what the battery bank is. The tough part about working with large gauge battery cables is that the bigger they get, the tougher it is to bend them, and they'll also only twist in certain directions. This one doesn't really cross because this one actually comes up this way instead of... Is there enough yeah, space there for two there. lugs? I think so. Unless we go like this. One more. Put these constraints together with the limits of working in a small space means that taking the extra step to draw out and test fit everything within the space you'll be working with can save you from a costly mistake. Because then what I could do is I could just bring the positive right in here, bring this positive down, which is alt. All right, I think that might be what we do. What do you think? Game plan? I think so. Our neighbors were moving their little houseboat across the harbor and ran into some trouble docking. So Kirk jumped in to help bring this wee little vessel home safely. That's all right, you're okay. I'm, I'm pretty tired. I, I wasn't putting power in it. Okay. <laughs> I know that, you like bright. Don't touch my docking. Exactly. You <laughs> <laughs> For now, just to keep us, they, oh shoot. The handle fell off. Remember this lovely thing? This was our quick fix to try to get all of our clothes stored in our hanging locker in the V-Birth so that we could get underway. <laughs> well, it's seen better days. That's all mold from the river trip because we were traveling in close to freezing temperatures and then trying to keep the boat warm. There was condensation forming on the hull constantly and this was pressed up against the hull and it got pretty wet. We've been actually living with all of our clothes out of this now since we got here to Mobile and they've all been kind of stacked on those shelves in the V-Birth but as soon as we start sailing again all that stuff's gonna come flying off. So we're working on putting permanent shelves into the V-Birth locker today and hopefully we're gonna get all of our clothes stored away again. You look real happy. I'm hangry, love. I am very hangry. And our arch fabricators are going to show up right at lunchtime. Yeah. It's not wrong if we all eat till dinner. <laughs> That's good. There. Oh, nice. We used the leftover marine plywood to create four shelves and eight supports, which we painted with the leftover bilge paint we had on hand, turning supplies we otherwise would have continued to haul around into something useful. We were now a month into what was quoted as a two to three week project. We were no closer to being finished since the initial fitting a week prior. It was clear then that some of his measurements were way off. So he took the arch back to his shop and was back for a second attempt to make it fit. Things were not going very well. At this point, we were starting to doubt the integrity of the arch. We weren't seeing the quality of work we were sold, and it was starting to feel like an endless cycle of trial and error where every step forward brought us two steps back. We expressed our concerns about the timeline and workmanship, seeing as he was now cutting the arch in half and using a ratchet strap to line up the legs. He assured us he would make it right. We told him we had two weeks remaining of our slip rental and that we needed the arch to be completed and installed with time to do a shakedown sale before we left. We didn't hear from him for another week. It's three o'clock on the last day before we're supposed to leave. They've been here all day hammering away at our boat, bending, sawing the arch. We finally told them this isn't gonna work. Thank you.